Um, what I do is I run a moving average on all of my charts that is it's just a three period moving average displaced forward one bar. N uh, nothing terribly complicated, almost any commercial software does displace moving averages for you. And what I do is once I've triggered this, uh, had this one, two, three set up, which is actually through my entry point that I don't have yet, I wait for the market to back off and make a, at least one bar that is a lower high, because now that's how I have my potential one, two, three set up. When the market backs off, I begin placing my orders over the high of these bars as the market comes back down. Okay? If this then comes down and takes out the one point, I've totally missed the trade that I probably don't want to be in. Okay? I, I, wait, I wait for this to, to back off. If it takes out the one point, it's no longer a good trade. The other thing I do with this moving average is it, it didn't happen here, but if I get three consecutive bars on the wrong side of that moving average, like in this case again, I'm looking to buy it. If I have three consecutive bars that close below that moving average, Again, I don't want the trade anymore. I, I'm, I'm, I'm either getting bad trade location or the market really isn't going because, because you know, as I said, market can't go up without making these one, two, threes. It should be stair stepping up. Those are the trades I want to be in that are just smoking right on up there. In this case, because, because it backs back off, it doesn't show the alacrity that I want to see. And so I've hopefully eliminated a bad trade by just not taking that. Okay, so, so if I don't get a one, two, three to set up in front of the order, I wait to see if I have three consecutive bars in the direction that the system's telling me to go. If I do, I wait, don't place the order, wait for the one, two, three to set up and deal with it accordingly. If I don't, I go ahead and place the order at the system point. Because in those cases, I'm afraid I'm not going to get the one, two, three to get me in. I'm afraid the market's just going to blow right on out of there. And, and some of your best trades, you're going to get slipped on. I mean, anybody who trades bonds in S&P probably doesn't feel that way because your best, you know, the slippage is so gargantuan sometimes. Is, it, is anybody but me, the last three months in the S&P have just sucked on executions. I mean, geez, unbelievable. Four or five hundred bucks a contract slippage. I don't know what they're doing in there, but, oof. I, I, you know, I've drastically curtailed my S&P trading, and I don't trade anything in New York. I, I, I shouldn't say that. Let me address that. I do trade some things in New York, but I trade them very sporadically. The executions in New York are just so bad, it's not worth the, ex uh, the aggravation to me. Yes, sir? Okay. Uh, you're watching that pattern develop. When you're in that third bar, you don't know until the end of that time period whether it's going to go through your buy line or not. You're sitting there saying, well, if it goes through, in theory, you should be placing your order before it gets to the buy stop, right? That you're sitting in? Yes. So at what point would you have placed your order? Do you have it in before the market or it gets there and then you No. Okay, the question was, as the market is approaching this buy spot, if assuming we were going to buy there, as the bars are being created, how do I know if I have three consecutive up bars in a row or not, and at what point do I actually place my order? I don't, unless I'm going to play golf, I don't place the orders at the open. Okay, I, I sit and watch them. And what I would be doing is, and, and, and the point you made, too, about, about intra-bar and you got to know, that's one of the reasons I use 15, 20 minute charts, because five minute charts, I'd be canceling orders every five minutes. Uh, but what I do is I'm watching the bars as they go up, and I know that this is the calculated area right here. Okay, so I'm watching, there's one bar with a higher high, there's another bar with a higher high, so I've had two. If the next bar triggers it, that would be three in a row, I don't want that. I don't want to buy the third bar up, because I think it's probably time for it to back off another bar or two. Now, if I don't have at least two bars up, 
then I got to be willing to buy it at that price, but I don't really have my order in. I'm, I'm basically waiting to, to see if I can't get a one, two, three set up in front of it. Because on, on, on a high percentage of the trades I do, and, and in this particular case here, the worst thing that would happen is I would, I would get the back off, it would trade through my price, which I didn't buy because I wasn't fast enough to have the order there. I figure it's got to back off because it's been up four or five bars in a row. And believe me, you're going to go home and look at this and you're going to see a market that moves 17 bars in a row. Okay? <laughs> it does happen. I'm not telling you this is, this is golden every day, but, but the vast majority of the time, this puts the odds in your favor. It gets back to what I said about Vegas in the house. You only need a small advantage. That's all. Uh, so what had happened here is I would have missed placing that buy stop. It would have gone through and then begin to back off, and I'd have been placing my orders one tick over the highs of these bars. And as it turns out, the high of this bar, and this is awfully small, I realize, but the high of this bar right here, basically I'd have wound up placing my order exactly where the system said to anyway. And it would have been filled, and I'd have got stopped out. It wouldn't have worked. But um, basically, since I don't want to buy three bars up, two bars up is good enough. And if, and if, if I... I, I, hate to, I hate to make any of this judgmental because I'm, I'm not really a, a real intuitive feel type trader. But, you know, you can, you can kind of tell, if the, is the market moving? Does it look like it's going to get to your price? Is it, is it showing some signs of strength? Uh, then I might go ahead and place the order because I've, I've had, uh, you know, maybe I'm right in here. You know, I'm, I'm just having a flat period and my, my order is just slightly above it. I might go ahead and place it at that point, assuming that I'm not going to get three bars in a row up. But, uh, but again, when you're, using, when you're using 15, 20 minute charts, it's, it's, it's rather peaceful. I mean, I used to trade five minute and one minute charts. Five minute, 15 minute charts are peaceful to me. You know? uh, when I traded five minute and one minute charts, boy, I, you know, I made money, but at the end of the day, I felt like I'd been in the ring with Mike Tyson and Larry Holmes. <laughs> Jeez, that's a tough way to earn a living, guys. And you want to talk about a happy broker. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, I mean, I'd have eight, ten trades a day, and at the end of the day, I'd be up 200 bucks. Right? I, I felt like I could make a better hourly wage at McDonald's, man. That's... <laughs> uh, at least per effort. Absolutely. Mom wanted me to be a carpenter. You know? um, okay, but um, I'd like to, if I can find another intraday chart, I want to... I want to go through this again, the, the multiple ways that this can happen. Okay, in this case, we've got a one, two, three set up as a cell here. Um, and and this, is a, this is a great example for how we could have been filtered out as a, of a buy. This is actually, on a daily basis in the DMARC, this was actually the open right here. And it moved up fairly strongly from this. So it's conceivable that we could have been buyers up here. If you're trading a volatility breakout system, it's very conceivable that you would have had something triggered here. And so I'm not showing you a great trade. I'm just showing you how beneficial this can be. Let's assume you did buy it here. And okay, let's be real honest. If you bought it here, where'd you get filled? <laughs> right here, right? <laughs> that's, that's, that's the nature of the beast, because that looks like it happened on a 9 o'clock news report, maybe. Uh, maybe Alan Greenspan sneezed. Would you like to be Alan Greenspan? That poor guy coughs and the market's getting pneumonia. I, I, I just, that's a rough job. Anyway, so we bought it up here, and, you know, we're trading this breakout system with no stops, so we're just, we've, you know, got our hands under our butts holding it up, hoping we don't die. <laughs> but we get this right here. We get a 1, 2, 3 set up against us, going the wrong way. Well, what's a 1, 2, 3 mean? The market's going down. We don't want to be long a market if it's going down. So you get to move your stop up to this point, and what are we talking about? We're talking, gee, that's only 15 points in the DMARC. Only. <laughs> You've got 100 on, of course. That's pretty expensive. But you're able, to, you're able to, to not have to take a loss because, theoretically, if that's where we're buying, our sell would be equidistant. Our sell would be down here someplace. So if you're trading the daily base system, you bought it here, you get stopped out here or stopped and reversed here, depending on which version you're trading. This allows you to cut your loss, what, about in, at least in a third. You're only taking about a third of the loss. Um, the, big, the big benefit to intraday trading, this is my opinion, guys, it's not a fact. My opinion, the benefit to intraday trading is not that you make a ton more money. 
I'll be honest, the first 18 months I had real-time quotes just killed me. I had made so many mistakes because on a one-minute chart, you know, this looks like a trend on a one-minute chart. It only moved 30 cents, but it, it looked great to me, you know. Um, and, and for the first 18 months that I had real-time quotes, I made less money than I made before because I was trading too much and doing too many things. What the intraday charts allow you to do, in my opinion, the biggest benefit to having intraday is controlling the risk. That's, that's what you can do best with intraday charts. And let me, let me do my Johnny Cochran imitation. Let me, let me get on my preacher's pulpit here. That's your job as a trader. If nobody's ever told you this, I think this is the key to trading. Write this down, tell them you heard it from me, and I'll deny it later. The only thing you can do as a trader is control risk. It's the only thing you have any control over. You know, we all are in the markets to make money. We went over this earlier. But you go in the market, you buy it, you sell it, you do whatever, and you come to the conclusion that you don't want to lose more than $1,000 on this trade. You've got execution costs, you've got the potential of gaps, the potential of slippage, but real close, you can make sure that you don't lose more than $1,000 on the trade. You can at least come very close to ensuring that. But decide that you want to make $1,000. You buy it, you sell it, now you want to make $1,000. What are you going to do? What can you do? Hope, wish, pray, drink, whatever you do. But you can't make the market go your way. So if you have no control over that, then doesn't it make sense that controlling the risk needs to be the focus of everything you do?